Hey you guys, it's Tiffany with Our Organic Life. So as you all know, we are in the process of trying to build our homestead. And of course, one of the biggest things that we are doing is getting a down payment for our house. And one way that we are doing that is by cutting our expenses. And one of the biggest expenses that you may be facing, even if you're not trying, even if you're just trying to save some money from the day to day, is your electric bill. So today I'm going to be discussing 10 ways that we cut our electric bill in half. So be sure to give a big thumbs up, leave a comment below, subscribe, and ring the bell. So the first way that we save money, and at one point our electric bill had jumped to over $200 when we had never had our electric bill be over $150. And of course, as time progresses, unfortunately, um, companies are raising their rates. Whenever our electric bill broke $200, we decided we needed to do, make some changes in our lives. So the first thing that we did to our electric bill was of course our AC. Now we live in Florida so of course it does get hot and it may seem extreme but I promise you you can it, you can kind of acclimate your body to it. So during the day our house is set at 80 degrees and then at night after it gets dark and we're ready to go to bed we turn the house down to 78. Like I said this may seem extreme and at first it was very difficult. I was very warm during the day. I sometimes took, would take a shower just so that my hair was wet and I would feel much cooler. And after a couple weeks my body acclimated and I was comfortable at 80 degrees. That made, that made such a huge difference in our electric bill. I believe that after we made those changes our electric bill had actually dropped by about $50 a month, if not more. The second thing that we did to cut our electric bill was that we switched all of our light bulbs in our house to LED light bulbs. And this may be getting more common where people are using LEDs. Um, some people I believe are still using the, I can't remember, the incandescents, the swirly tube light bulbs. Those have nothing on this. So this, this light bulb is actually a 9 watt. We actually have some in the house that are 7 watt and even as low as 4 watt depending upon how big the room is. And some people are hesitant to switch to this low of a wattage because they think that it's going to be um, not as bright or not bright enough or they have the thought, oh it's LED, it's going to be super bright. You can get soft white LED light bulbs. And then another thing also to consider is your outside lights. If you have lights next to your front door or if you have security lights. If you have security lights that are actually not hooked up to your house, you can even find security lights that are solar powered. The next thing that we did is the interior of our house is a very light gray. It's not quite white but it is a very light gray and what this does essentially is lighter colors are going to bounce and reflect light more efficiently and so during the daytime I never have any lights on in the house. I never need lights. I open up my windows and it lights up the whole room and because the walls are light Walls, light is not being absorbed into the, into the walls, so for instance if you have darker walls, say for instance you have very dark brown walls, those walls are not going to bounce light, they're actually going to absorb light more. So you may have more of a need to turn a light on during the day. So this is another way that you can eliminate the need to turn on a light. Another easy and cheap solution for you to cut your electric bill is to, and it's kind of a lifestyle change is instead of turning on, say for instance, in our living room, we have a large fan with a light that has three light bulbs. And then next to our couch, we have a single standing light. And so instead of turning on the fan light and running three light bulbs at once, we just turn on the smaller light 
too because we don't need a whole lot of light in the living room and it's just nice it's subtle it's not so bright because of course at night we're getting ready to go to sleep and we don't want bright light shining in our eyes so this duller slightly darker light actually is beneficial to use instead of the big overhead light and of course running one bulb is better than running three the fifth way that we save on our electric bill and this may cost a little bit of money at first is that we use a tankless water heater instead of a conventional tank water heater and it actually runs better because it only heats water when you're using it versus maintaining the temperature of the tank at all times now you can adjust the temperature at which the water heater will heat your water we run ours at about 110 but we've had it as low as 105 degrees fahrenheit but you can run it as low as you deem feasible. If you don't use that hot of water, then you really don't need to have it at 105 or 110. You could have it even lower. The sixth way we save on our electric bill is that we unplug any and all of our appliances or electronic devices that are not in use. Some people write it off as a myth, but it is a thing. Residual power use is a thing, especially in some of your bigger block plugs those pull residual energy even though they're not being used. So by unplugging these different appliances when you're not using them, you can save yourself. It may only be 10 cents or 15 cents here and there, but it adds up very, very quickly if you have multiple appliances plugged in and not being used at the same time. Another thing, if you want to take it a step further, I actually turn off the clocks on our oven and our microwave because we have a wall clock in the living room and I have a watch and I have a phone and I don't look at that clock in the kitchen so why should I be running it all the time like uh, like I said it's tiny but it adds up over time the seventh way that we save on our electric bill is that I wait until I have a full load of laundry before I do a laundry load so it may mean I'm doing a load once a week or maybe even less so if you can aim to do laundry once a week instead of multiple times throughout the week not only are you going to be saving on money but you're also going to be saving up more of your time and then if you're really feeling really ambitious air dry your clothes hang them out to dry instead of using the dryer because the dry dryers use up so much energy to dry clothes eighth way that you can save on your electricity is your freezer now a freezer has an easier time maintaining its temperature if it is full so keep your freezer fully stocked and if you have multiple freezers say for instance you are storing meats that you've just harvested off of the land then consider getting a chest freezer instead of an upright freezer because whenever you open an upright freezer all of the cold air falls out whereas when you open a chest freezer the cold air is staying in the freezer and you're not wasting all of that cold air the ninth way that you can cut out your electric may seem redundant and it may seem like a no-brainer but unfortunately it is a bad habit that many of us myself included have formed and that is turn your computer off when it's not in use yes it draws a lot less energy when it's in sleep mode but you have so many different little electronics that are running in the background many different softwares are running in the background even in sleep mode and another thing also is turn off all the different things that are hooked up to your computer when you're not using them. If you want to take this last method a step further, you could even, if you have a printer, if you are not using the printer, turn the printer off. Leave it off. Only turn it on when you are going to be printing. This is another way that you can also further cut your costs. And last but not least, the simplest method that would be not only beneficial to cut your electric bill, but also to keep pests and bugs out of your house is to seal your house. Benefits of sealing your house are of course preventing drafts during the colder months and pre preventing all of your nice cold AC air to be let out of the windows. This could be cracks in the windows, maybe where your window closes there might be a slight bit of opening. They have strips that you can get at home improvement stores that you can literally stick to the underside of your windows. I have those stuck to almost all of my windows because when the window closes, it basically creates a seal under the window. Check your trim, caulk your windows, check your doors. Make sure that your doors are shutting entirely. Those few steps will also help in eliminating air leak as well as keeping pests out of your home, which to me, that is always a huge bonus.
So I hope this helped you guys learn maybe some ways that you can cut your electric bill. I am super excited for the many things that are coming our way and maybe I'll do another video like this where I can help you save money elsewhere. So these 10 different methods that we have used have actually cut our electric bill in half and our electric bill went from averaging about $200 to $220 a month to averaging between $80 and $120 a month. That is a huge difference and that's more money going towards our savings so that we can build our house quicker. So I hope that these tips and tricks helped you out. Be sure to leave a comment if you have any other suggestions as to how you can cut your electric bill because I am always looking for more ways that I can cut my bills and reduce our energy use. So leave a comment below. Be sure to give this video a like and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already so that you can get notifications whenever we post new videos and ring the bell. So in the meantime, happy homesteading.